Opening a new week on MLB Tonight, presented by Camping World. Matt Vaskersian and courtesy of NTT Home Plate Camp, Carlos Pena and Dan Plezak. A lot to get to today. We'll ride along to the ballpark with Mets superfan Jim Brewer and Pete Alonzo. Uh, Pedro Martinez is going to join us coming up in just a bit to celebrate a milestone moment in his career. And before we get to the big story of the day, and that's Ken Rosenthal's report on how Major League Baseball hopes to find a path to the field for 2020, Dan Plezak, Mother's Day weekend, leisure, but social distancing practiced everywhere. Tell us about your weekend. Well, my weekend, Matt, there it is. The MGI Zip Navigator. Listen, with this new social distancing, no caddies allowed at my country club, Upper Montclair Country Club, I decided to get ahead of the game, Matt, and I bought a remote control cart. Goes up to five miles an hour. You can direct it from one hole to the next. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> this is highly controversial, though. You, you, you're trying to get the caddies out of a job. <laughs> no, I know. And, and I named it. My normal caddy, his name is Ross Stevens. So the name for my new walking caddy is the Ross man. So anytime I hit a bad shot, I blame it on the Ross man. Poor Ross. Talk to you? In absentia. <laughs> Guy's still yes. getting blamed. He's yes. not even close to the track right now. Hey, uh, let's let's go from that fun moment to uh, something that could be a lot more fun. And that's the Ken Rosenthal report that Major League Baseball has approved a proposal to submit to the Players Union that highlights a path to getting back on the field. The two sides are expected to meet on Tuesday to discuss the proposal. Here are the bullet points. A regular season that would begin in early July and consisting of roughly 80 games, give or take. The schedule will be regionalized into three compartments, if you will. East, Central, West. There will be interleague play, but everybody will stay within their own region home ballparks, and the expanded playoff proposal that was posed earlier before this environment. So, Carlos, I'll start with you. Your initial reactions to this plan, how optimistic are you? I am very optimistic. Uh, I just think that uh, as long as we're able to get a plan uh, on the table, that we can get things moving. Look, keep in mind, this is not going to be set in stone. This is a very liquid situation. It's changing every single day and very unpredictable. But the fact that we're talking about a solid plan regional play i am actually welcoming the opportunity to come up with new ideas even the postseason uh plan of being an extended uh, amount of teams more teams in the postseason kind of like a round robin i'm excited about that so it's a great opportunity for baseball to really put to test many of these ideas that have been floating around and see if they work even possibly keeping them when things come back to normal if it works out so um, I'm optimistic about this idea and about these next few days uh, for the industry. You know, Carlos, I agree with you. I'm more optimistic than ever because 2020 with this COVID virus is a different uh, sports landscape than we've seen in all major sports and not just here in the United States, but globally. I think that the players and the owners and somehow, some way that they're going to try to get together to try to have some baseball in 2020. I think the key is, are they going to be able to do it in a manner that protects the players' health, the umpires, the people associated with the game, around the game, at the ballparks, wherever they may be? But it seems like we're getting closer and closer to a reality that we will be seeing Big League Baseball in 2020. I want to double back on one element of this plan that's fascinating to me. And I think with an eye toward making the schedule as realistic as possible, again, to minimize logistics and travel, the East, the Central, and the West will stay self-contained. Yes, there can be interleague play, but you're going to keep everybody regionalized to make travel a little easier and to try to get all these games played in a very compacted piece of schedule. Carlos, again, I'll start with you on this. H having played for so long, you know, say you're with the Rays still. You're not going across the country to play the Angels and the Dodgers anymore. You're staying on the East Coast. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, man, I mean, I'll tell you what. Um, it is a lot of fun to play your division rivals. At the same time, you, you take those trips as almost a break and an opportunity to gain some ground. Right here, playing against the Yankees, playing against the Red Sox repeatedly, um, it just makes it a lot more difficult um, uh, to actually um, make progress, right, and climb up uh, the ladder in the standing. So it's going to be interesting. At the same time, I kind, of, I kind of welcome that type of intensity. I think fans will enjoy it quite a bit, and, and players are going to enjoy that type of opportunity as well. 
you know, I think of this, Matt, and I look at how tough the East would be. So just think you're the Mets, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Rays, and then you play in the outer division in your league, and then you play against the NL East teams. The Philadelphia Phillies look like they're going to be a much improved team. The world champion Nationals, a lot of people think that the Mets are a team that contend. So that Eastern seaboard area, wow, that would be some tough sledding. Boy, and again, just to note, it's all very fluid, and uh, it's one of many things that the league is looking into to try to get back on the field and execute a 2020 season. We're going to take a break, guys. When we come back, Pedro Martinez is going to join us to celebrate a milestone he achieved on this date 20 years ago, and we'll also celebrate some of his charitable work on this date right now, next on MLB Tonight. MLB Tonight is presented by Camping World, making RVing fun and easy since 1966. Visit CampingWorld.com today. Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Camping World. Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez and his wife Catalina, the director of Pedro's Foundation, have been instrumental in forming a coalition of more than 40 big leaguers who started the Step Up to the Plate Fund, which has raised more than a half a million dollars for virus relief efforts, including food, personal protective equipment, medical workers, and other essential supplies. One of many relief efforts happening in the DR, Major League Baseball, the Players Association, Players Trust, have also been very active in the area. Uh, it's great to have Pedro and Carolina on with us on MLB tonight. Hey, congratulations on such great work to both of you. Tell us about the week and what you have planned this week for, for your relief fund, Pedro. Well, uh, thank you. I miss you guys. I miss you so much. Uh, uh, at the station over there, uh, we we are continuing to actually uh, bring food to the people because we 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 we're, we're getting information from the state so that we can actually uh, approach you know the things that 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 will probably are are the most needed in the areas and and so far food and equipment for. Uh, the medical staff, the people that are dealing with the, you know, the uh, the people that are sick in the hospital, are the priorities right now. But we will continue to do uh, as much as we can. And uh, but for this weekend, I think it's going to be uh, medical equipment to protect our nurses and, and doctors, and uh, continue to give away more food for the people. Uh, I didn't know that there were so many people in need. Uh, you imagine. And you expect it to be a lot, but to see it with your own eyes, how much people need, it, 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 it's shocking. Pedro, uh, we were talking earlier about how sometimes, you know, you get into this game, you're in the mound, you're in, in the intensity of a ball game, and you kind of shut the, the entire world around you off, in a sense. But here, you were a star on the mound, but now you're a star back in Dominican Republic for all the people that that are really needing help you know can you talk about how all this stuff puts what we do in perspective and the platform that you have and how you're using it you know in some ways for the young players and for us that that had a better life uh since we since we started uh you know it's shocking because you go away to play baseball and and you know you have a better life and sometimes you you kind of separate yourself from the reality but for all of us this time it's been a reality check from the young players to the old players to the retirees i mean everybody is getting a reality check because uh we went away to play we had success we had all that and we have a different life but to come back to the Dominican Republic in, in moments like this is really what makes you appreciate why you play baseball, why was God so, so good to you, why baseball was so important to, to you. Really great work that, that the both of you were doing, but we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little baseball with you, Pedro, in the short time we have with you, because yes. Tuesday is the 20-year anniversary 
I mean, I can't believe it's been 20 years since your complete game, two-hit, 15-punch-out day against the Baltimore Orioles. So, let's see how well you remember this game. I want to ask you a few questions about the lineup that you completely destroyed that night in Baltimore. Uh, do you remember the Orioles' number two hitter was the player traded for you from the Expos to the Dodgers? He actually had okay numbers against you for his career. Do you remember who that was? The line of the shield. The line of the shield. <laughs> ding, ding, and ding. you know what, Matt? I was really aware of the line of the shield. I did not want him having success against me. In that fastball, I can't remember because I, I got on top of him and I, I just said, you know, I need to put him away. This is the guy I got traded for, and this is the guy I cannot let have success on top of me uh, to kind of justify my trade. For him. Okay, here's uh, here's another question. The Orioles cleanup hitter, a five-time All-Star, he made his money in Cleveland, and he had a really hard time with you. Do you remember who that was? Might have been B.J. Sorhoff. Not a bad guess. Uh, Albert Bell is who we were looking Albert for. Albert Bell, yeah. And yeah. Albert had yeah. huge career Albert numbers, too. but yeah, yeah, he was only one for 15 against you. This is going to be... Yeah. You can hit that. <laughs> Albert. <laughs> Albert. On the radar, I really like that guy. He was quiet. He, he was into his own world. Whenever we met in the All-Star game, for some reason, we attract each other and we, we will find each other talking about different things. He was such a cool dude, but it, I, I think he misunderstood a lot. I got to ask you before we go, uh, and this is my hacky Spanish, Mira, uh, El Cabello. <laughs> you. Cabello? you letting it go, Not huh, Carolina? You going to let it go? I'm going to let it go. And, and I, I, I don't know. Harold wanted me to curl it up and, and, and let it grow. It's coming. It's a it's coming. quarantine look. <laughs> I, I look also, you. the gray. I feel you. The gray here. See, you're making it work, man. Show Pedro and Carolina, that. thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, on behalf of everybody in baseball, tremendous work that you're doing. Thank you for being so generous. And uh, we hope to see you both in person soon. Thank you, guys. We well, thank you, you so much. Too. All right, from 15 strikeouts by Pedro Martinez to 20 by Max Scherzer just four years ago, winning together by Dusan. Electricity in the air, electricity on the mound. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. You know, I had talked to Strauss and how he handled you know, that lineup and talked about pitching up in the zone against these guys and how he had success with that. It's all been about the heater tonight for Max. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. I know that was a little nugget I kept in the back of my mind and just trying to keep finding situations where I could go up with a fastball and then expand the slider. Swing and a miss. 20 strikeouts for Max Scherzer. I mean, the strikeouts are sexy, and be able to punch out 20, it's sexy. When we come back from a quick break, we'll take a ride to Port St. Lucie with Mets super fan comedian Jim Brewer and that guy, home run king Pete Alonso, next on MLB Tonight. Winning Together is presented by Doosan. Doosan and MLB remind you to stay at home and stop the spread. MLB Tonight is presented by Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief. Works fast and you won't stink. The official pain relief cream of Major League Baseball. Well, one of our favorite personalities in the game is Pete Alonso. So what would it be like if Pete Alonso rode to the ballpark in spring training a couple of months ago with one of the funniest Mets super fans around, the comedian Jim Brewer? So you're probably wondering why I'm driving around in the dark. I'm picking up a friend. Good morning, Slugger. Hey, how are we doing? Good, man. How are you? Chilling. You ready? Yeah, you look good. Right, awesome. Let's go. Thank you. Some of the excitement is a lot on the radio, Mets radio. I don't know if you ever heard this, but here's your very first home run. 
Strider to the belt, his first pitch. Alonso crushes one in the air, deep to right center. This is career home run number one for Pete Alonso. <laughs> yeah. I, I just play wiffle ball and I get amped up when I when I relive things. So does that get you amped up, ready to go for the new season? Or Oh, yeah. But looking back on it, like, yeah. I knew it was a really big deal at the moment, but with time going by, how significant that was for me. That was crazy. Like, to me, it just means that much more. That's that's Tomas Nito right there. Oh, that's Nito? Yeah. Oh, Senor Nito. What's up, fellas? What up? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, we are. As a Mets fan, to go past Hunley, this was a moment that I think all Mets fans went, oh my gosh. Darvish serves up a bunch, first pitch. Oh, Darvish. Alonzo, it's a high fly, right center. This could be the record. Castellanos back, it's long gone. A home run, number 42. And Pete Alonzo has set the New York Mets single season franchise home run record with a long bomb to right center. I, I remember the this Mets one. Have a one nothing lead Light. and Big Pete continues to rewrite history. As soon as you hit it, is that you feel it, don't you? The ones that you don't feel, that's when you know you hit it flush. That's when you know it's like, oh man. Yeah. You don't feel the ball on the bat, but you get this, it's this sensation throughout your entire body. Yeah, that's that, it. So this one, history maker. Yeah. This is one of my all-time favorite calls, and I don't know if you ever heard it. Check this one out. Okay. Falls in one strike pitch. It's it high in the air, right center field. Hamilton looks back. He's at the wall. He leaps. It's gone. Home run, number 53. And Pete Alonso stands alone as Major League Baseball's rookie home run. Pete Alonso has done what no rookie in Major League Baseball history has ever done. 53 home runs. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> to make that many people happy just hitting a baseball, it's, 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 it's crazy. Bigger, it's bigger than baseball. It's yeah. a moment in life. It's what we cheer for. It's, a, it's the hero to get us out of our lives. Whatever is going on in life, we look at you we look at baseball as something to get away from it. Oh, thank you. We are here, my friend. Perfect. Look at that, like a glove. Well, I guess I gotta go. Yeah, They don't have a uniform for me. I mean, I'm sure you could, I'm sure if you asked and, and worked that out. It might. Yeah. All right, Pete, have a good one. Oh, thanks, Joe. Have a great season, thank all the you. best to you. Well, our colleague Al Leiter was a Met, but before his time in New York, he spent two seasons in South Florida and distinguished himself on this date in baseball history as a Marlin. We'll flash back to it next. Welcome back to MLB Tonight, presented by Camping World. Well, in Middletown, New Jersey, there's not a whole lot of youth baseball being played, but it didn't stop these kids. And from some little leaguers in Jersey to an anniversary for another shore legend. Now, one thing about the luxury of an 11 run lead like Al Leiter has, you don't really have to give in. If you feel like you can get a breaking ball over and that's the pitch you want to throw, go ahead. History of Joe Robbie. Al Leiter with the Marlins' first no hitter. Boy, Al Leiter was pretty good that day. And speaking of no hitters, Tuesday, in honor of Al's masterpiece, you can celebrate some notable no hitters with us, starting with Jim Abbott's no hitter at 10 a.m. Eastern, ending with Don Larson's perfect game in game five of the 1956 Fall Classic. Dan and Carlos, you guys were a part of winning sides of no-hitters. In fact, Dan, two of them for you, if I don't recall, that's got to be a thrill. Yes, Kevin Millwood and Juan Nieves. April 15th, Juan Nieves. Two outs in the ninth inning. This is when we started out the season. Eddie Murray 
one out away from baseball immortality. And watch this diving catch by Robin Yount, out number 27, and Juan Davis throws the first no-hitter in Brewers history. Oh, that's that's pretty cool, Dan. Well, you know, Matt Garza uh, for the race uh, came out and just mowed down hitters um, that day. I mean, he was just lights out. You could actually tell on the way that he, he went about his business. This is mannerisms that he was in full control, man. And that was so awesome to be part of that. And that year was extremely special for the race. And there I am going crazy, of course. <laughs> Celebrate those some of those no-hitters yeah. with us on Tuesday on MLB Network. We're back with you on MLB tonight on Wednesday. Until then, thanks for watching and stay safe. See you Wednesday.